beginning it was it was a mess, but when we managed to get this away to clean out the samples, we got really pure DNA to manage to tell something about him and especially about his ancestry. It is possible that the ancient astronauts taught the Egyptians that mummification was a way of preserving their genetic information in the DNA. For over a century, King Tut was seen as Egypt's golden boy until DNA cracked his coffin wide open. Ooh, I never seen something like this. Scientists discovered a hidden bloodline of incest, disease, and foreign ancestry so disturbing, it nearly rewrote Egyptian history, malaria, deformities, and a genetic collapse. That was just the beginning, when they looked closer at his tomb and his missing heart. There's something very obvious missing, because there's no heart. The absence of the heart might suggest that Tutankhamun needed immediately attention somewhere far from where the top-class embalmers were. They realized the boy king wasn't just sick. He may have been buried to hide a dynasty's darkest secret. The forbidden union that changed Egyptian history. For centuries, the golden image of Tutankhamun, the boy king inlaid with lapis lazuli, gold and turquoise, stood as a proud symbol of ancient Egyptian power. But in 2010, that shimmering image shattered under the microscope. Using DNA extracted from his brittle bones, scientists at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo confirmed something previously unproven and deeply unsettling. Tutankhamun was the child of a full brother-sister union. His father, Akhenaten, the revolutionary pharaoh who had tried to upend Egypt's religious system, had fathered him with his own sister, whose identity had long puzzled historians. The mummy labeled the younger lady turned out to be that sister, his mother. This wasn't a rare occurrence. It was a dynastic strategy. Ancient Egyptian royalty believed they were descended from the gods, and sibling marriage was seen as preserving that divine bloodline. But what was once considered sacred is now understood as genetically disastrous. This revelation stunned even seasoned Egyptologists. Why? Because it didn't just explain Tut's severe health problems, like a clubfoot, scoliosis, and possible epilepsy, but also reframed the collapse of an entire dynasty. It confirmed that the last great line of the 18th dynasty had been biologically sabotaging itself for generations. A gene pool narrowed by royal politics had created a boy so fragile he needed a cane to walk and likely couldn't father a healthy heir. And still, his wife, Ankesanaman, also his half-sister, was expected to bear children. Both of their two mummified daughters were still born. And yet, that's only the beginning of what his DNA revealed. Because once scientists looked closer at his genes, they realized the truth about Tut's bloodline didn't just lie in who his parents were. It lay in what that DNA was hiding. The genetic time bomb inside the golden coffin. CT scans and DNA testing on Tutankhamun's body revealed not just one or two health problems, but a terrifying cluster of congenital defects. Tut had a cleft palate, scoliosis, fused vertebrae, a club foot, and necrosis in his left foot that made it almost impossible to walk. And while those conditions stunned researchers, they also raised another question. How could one teenage boy carry so many genetic burdens? The answer lay not in myth or magic, but in his chromosomes. The DNA team discovered that Tutankhamun was not just the product of a single incestuous union. His genome showed signs of multi-generational inbreeding. That meant the genetic load, the probability of harmful mutations, had been compounding for generations. Even stranger, among the over 100 walking sticks found in Tut's tomb, several showed signs of daily wear, not ceremonial use. Some were splintered, others were repaired. This wasn't just a royal accessory, it was a lifeline. Some researchers now believe he may have relied on crutches for most of his short life, even appearing in artwork hunting from a chariot not for accuracy, but as propaganda. Yet the genetic horror doesn't end with bones and birth defects. One of the most chilling discoveries was the presence of Malaria Tropica DNA, the deadliest strain known to man. Found in Tut's remains, it was likely the final blow to an already failing body. According to the Journal of the American Medical Association, this was the earliest genetically confirmed case of malaria in history, and in combination with his deformed foot, it likely led to fatal complications like sepsis or pneumonia. Tut didn't just die young. He may have suffered enormously in silence. And yet, amid the pain, another mystery loomed. Who buried him? And why was his tomb, so hastily prepared, filled with objects that may not have even been made for him? The next genetic twist would shake Egyptology even further. The mismatched tomb and the mystery of his missing legacy. For a pharaoh whose death rewrote history, Tutankhamun was buried like a footnote, 
His tomb, cataloged as KV-62, was shockingly small for a king, cramped, awkwardly painted, and lacking the grandeur of his royal predecessors. Some historians once chalked this up to his sudden death, but DNA evidence now adds a far more disturbing layer to the story. The theory? Tut wasn't supposed to die that early, and when he did, there was no prepared tomb for him. His burial was a logistical scramble, and even some of the treasures entombed with him might not have belonged to him at all. Evidence shows that many of the objects, furniture, jewelry, and even the iconic golden mask, may have been repurposed from other royals, possibly even women. The back of the mask shows signs that the original name was scraped off and replaced with Tutankhamun's. One of the shrines bears iconography associated with a female pharaoh, possibly Neferneferwaten, a figure some scholars believe was Nefertiti herself, ruling under a different name. The DNA study confirmed that Tut's maternal lineage was tied to this powerful, yet still elusive royal figure, which raises an unnerving theory. Was Tutankhamun buried with his stepmother's items? Or worse, was he buried in her tomb? What's even more haunting is the mystery surrounding his missing heart. In traditional Egyptian burials, the heart was the most sacred organ, essential for judgment in the afterlife. But in Tut's embalming, his heart and sternum were completely missing, not just removed, but apparently burned or destroyed. Why would the most vital piece of a pharaoh's spiritual identity be absent? Was this an accident, a rushed job due to his death, or was it intentional? Some theorists believe Tut's death may have sparked a palace cover-up. His successor, Ai, who ruled immediately after him, was once a vizier and possibly the one who buried him. Ai's name appears prominently on funerary items leading some to believe he may have hijacked the throne, buried Tut in secret, and erased parts of his legacy. Others suggest the botched mummification was due to the use of excessive resin, which essentially cooked the body during burial. But what if the cover-up was not political, but biological? Because once the DNA results of other royal mummies were revealed, it wasn't just Tut who had troubling genetic markers. The entire 18th dynasty may have been compromised, and Tutankhamun was simply the most visible casualty. The Eleven Mummies Study, a dynasty plagued by hereditary collapse. When Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities and an international genetics team launched a project in the early 2000s to study 11 royal mummies from the 18th dynasty, their goal was simple, map King Tutankhamun's family tree. What they uncovered, however, was a sweeping biological tragedy. These weren't just mummies, they were case studies in dynastic degeneration. DNA analysis revealed a pattern of shared mutations across multiple generations, defects not isolated to Tutankhamun, but common across his immediate and extended family. The team used autosomal STR markers to confirm parentage and trace recessive traits. What emerged was horrifying. Tutankhamun's father, Akhenaten, long depicted with oddly feminine features and an elongated skull, showed strong indicators of Marfan-like syndrome, a genetic disorder that affects connective tissue often resulting in abnormal height, a narrow chest, scoliosis, and cardiovascular issues. His exaggerated portrayal in art, once thought symbolic, may have been grounded in biological truth. Further back, Amenhotep III, Tut's grandfather, showed signs of dental malformations and osteoarthritis and had a thickened skull, possibly another result of inherited skeletal disorders. Several female mummies, including the elder lady, believed to be Queen Tai, Tut's grandmother, showed signs of arteriosclerosis, evidence that health degradation was not exclusive to male rulers. Even more alarming were cases like the two stillborn fetuses found in Tutankhamun's tomb, genetically confirmed to be his daughters. Their preserved remains suggested cranial deformities and developmental abnormalities, likely a direct result of compound inbreeding from both paternal and maternal lines. These children, never named, represented the dynasty's final echo. Scientists began referring to the dynasty's family tree as a genetic whirlpool. And the most haunting detail? Among the 11 mummies tested, none were entirely free of signs of inherited disease. Some were born weak, others died young. A few may have reigned while secretly suffering from chronic pain, heart conditions, or learning disabilities. The empire they ruled appeared strong, but inside its gilded tombs, its rulers were crumbling from within. The hidden room behind Tut's tomb, a queen in the walls. Just when historians thought Tutankhamun's secrets had all been unearthed, a stunning new theory emerged nearly a century after his tomb was first opened. There might be more chambers hidden behind his burial walls. In 2015, 
British Egyptologist Nicholas Reeves examined high-resolution scans of the tomb's north and west walls and made a startling discovery. The outlines of previously unseen doorways masked under layers of plaster and paint. His theory? One of those sealed doors could lead to the lost tomb of Queen Nefertiti herself. The implications were staggering. Reeves believed that Tutankhamun had been buried in a tomb originally constructed for a queen, likely Nefertiti, and that due to his sudden death, he was placed in the front chamber of her resting place. This could explain why the tomb was so small, oddly shaped, and filled with objects not originally made for him. It would also suggest that the true burial of Nefertiti, one of the most mysterious figures in all of Egyptian history, lies just feet away behind an unbroken wall that's remained untouched for over 3,000 years. But what made the theory even more compelling and unsettling was that radar scans conducted by the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities appeared to show anomalies consistent with hidden cavities. The walls weren't just decorative, they were concealing architecture. The idea that Tutankhamun's tomb might be just a front section of a much larger complex ignited a global frenzy. Could this be the final chapter of the Amarna saga, sealed away to hide not just one ruler's fate, but an entire family's collapse? To this day, no official excavation has broken through the wall. Political complications, preservation concerns, and fierce academic debate have stalled progress. But the theory hasn't gone away. Some experts believe there's a reason the wall hasn't been breached. It may not just contain another tomb, but evidence of a royal cover-up. If Nefertiti is truly buried behind that wall, it would rewrite everything we know about Tutankhamun's death, succession, and the collapse of Egypt's most controversial dynasty. The irony, Tutankhamun, once nearly erased from history, might still be guarding the biggest secret of them all, a foreign bloodline, the Hittite letter that changed everything. In the chaos following Tutankhamun's death, one of the most mysterious diplomatic episodes in all of ancient Egypt unfolded, and many scholars now believe it's directly tied to the pharaoh's DNA. Carved into the clay archives of Hattusa, the capital of the Hittite Empire, lies a letter that would send shockwaves through the world of archaeology. In it, a widowed Egyptian queen, almost certainly Ankesanamun, Tutankhamun's half-sister and wife, writes a desperate plea to the Hittite king, Supiluliuma I, My husband has died. I have no son. They say you have many sons. Send me one. He shall be my husband and king of Egypt. This was unprecedented. No Egyptian queen had ever asked a foreign king to send his son to rule as pharaoh. The reason, some historians believe, was written not in politics, but in genetics. After the collapse of the inbred 18th dynasty, there were no healthy male royals left. But the story turns darker. The Hittite prince Zananza was reportedly sent, but he never made it. He was assassinated en route, most likely by loyalists to Ai or Horemheb, who feared a foreign takeover of the Egyptian crown. Was this a coup to bury the Amarna dynasty once and for all? Some scholars say yes. Others whisper that the assassination was a cover-up to prevent the Egyptian public from learning that the god kings had run out of gods. The dynasty's divine bloodline was no longer divine. It was crumbling under the weight of its own secrets. Even more eerie, Enkesanamun vanishes from history shortly after this letter. Her tomb has never been found. Her name was erased, just like Tutankhamun's. Some believe she was forced to marry Ai, Others suggest she was eliminated to prevent the truth from spreading, that the royal family was genetically doomed, and Egypt had nearly invited a foreign dynasty to take its place. This letter, unearthed not in Egypt but in modern-day Turkey, remains one of the most shocking pieces of evidence that Tutankhamun's DNA didn't just end a bloodline, it nearly overthrew an empire. The smoking gun in his grandparents' DNA, a deeper curse of the bloodline. While most of the world focused on Tutankhamun's DNA, scientists quietly expanded their testing beyond just his immediate parents, and what they found in his grandparents' genetic material stunned them. In 2010, as part of the same study published in JAMA, researchers analyzed the remains of Yuya and Thuya, believed to be the maternal grandparents of Tutankhamun. On the surface, they were considered outliers, non-royals who had somehow risen to high status under Amenhotep III. But DNA testing revealed something shocking. They were genetically unrelated to the 18th dynasty bloodline. In fact, some forensic data suggested that Yuya's features, his facial structure and unusually preserved remains, didn't match typical Egyptian profiles of the time. 
This opened the door to a radical theory. Could Tutankhamun's family have included foreign blood from Syria or Anatolia, secretly merged into the royal line? Some archaeologists now point to Yuya's unusually long, aquiline nose, his European-like profile, and burial with non-Egyptian funerary items as evidence that he may have originated from outside Egypt perhaps from the Mitanni Kingdom, a Hurrian-speaking people whose princesses were frequently married into Egyptian royalty as part of political alliances. If true, then Tutankhamun's DNA wasn't just corrupted by incest. It was also compromised by cultural and political collision. The Amarna line may have been a hybrid dynasty, fusing native Egyptian and foreign genetic material while desperately trying to maintain a divine image through inbreeding. That double-edged genetic legacy could explain why so many physical traits in Amarna-era statues, elongated skulls, almond eyes, high cheekbones, don't match typical Egyptian art before or after. Even more disturbing, some genetic markers found in Tutankhamun have never been fully identified. To this day, certain alleles in his mitochondrial DNA appear rare or anomalous, suggesting either mutation or unrecorded ancestry. Some fringe theorists have even suggested this as evidence of deliberate tampering with the royal genome, though mainstream scientists attribute it to generational mutation caused by inbreeding. Regardless, what's clear is that Tutankhamun's genetic mystery didn't begin with him. It may stretch back two or even three generations. The DNA debate that rocked Egypt and why the results were nearly buried. After the 2010 DNA study on Tutankhamun stunned the world, you might assume it was universally celebrated as a historic breakthrough. But in Egypt itself, the reaction was far more explosive and political. Within days of the JAMA publication, fierce debates erupted inside Egypt's academic circles and parliament, not over the incest revelations, but over what the DNA also seemed to suggest about Tutankhamun's racial identity. The findings sparked a firestorm that threatened to derail the entire project. When the Discovery Channel aired a documentary about the DNA findings, it included facial reconstructions of Tutankhamun's features based on genetic and cranial data. The resulting image shocked many. Tut appeared to have a lighter skin tone and European-adjacent features. Some Western scientists pointed out that haplogroups similar to those in Tutankhamun's DNA had also been found in modern Western Eurasian populations, including Europe. This led to a dangerous and highly politicized misunderstanding, suggesting that King Tut may have been more Caucasian than Egyptian. The backlash in Egypt was immediate. Politicians, scholars, and cultural institutions accused the research team of colonial bias, claiming that the reconstruction was an attempt to whitewash a pharaoh and erase his African roots. Former Minister of Antiquities Zahi Hawass, who had originally authorized the DNA project, suddenly distanced himself from the public interpretation of the results. He stated flatly that Tutankhamun is 100% Egyptian and called for restrictions on the release of raw genetic data. The controversy became so heated that Egypt reportedly blocked further DNA research on royal mummies for years after the incident. Behind the scenes, Egypt's national identity was at stake. Tutankhamun wasn't just an ancient king, he was a modern symbol of Egyptian pride, tourism, and sovereignty. The idea that foreign labs could use his DNA to suggest foreign ancestry, whether Eurasian, Mitanni, or otherwise, was seen by some as a form of scientific imperialism. Others argued that science should be free of borders, but the truth was now politically radioactive. In the end, the controversy itself became part of Tutankhamun's legacy. A teenager who died 3,000 years ago, likely unable to walk without a cane, had somehow ignited a modern debate over race, nationalism, science, and the ownership of ancient identity. And his DNA, still locked in government vaults, remains at the center of one of the most sensitive archaeological debates of the 21st century. What other secrets could be buried in ancient DNA? Could even more pharaohs be hiding similar truths? Tell us what you think, and don't forget to subscribe for more mysteries just waiting to be uncovered.